Um, well, thanks everyone for coming to, uh, to this, uh, this uh, fireside chat with uh, Zabotage um, today. Uh, for those of you that, that don't know uh, Zabotage, he is a, a Hong Kong resident and uh, a well-known urban street artist. Uh, he's, uh, he's collaborated and created um, urban art for the likes of Prada, Louis Vuitton, Roger Dubois, uh, and various other prestigious brands who um, recognize how good his art is. Um, he also has the accolade of being the first street artist uh, in Hong Kong to sell an NFT, uh, which uh, he uh, created uh, at, at the end of last year, and which we're going to get a glimpse of today. And uh, Zabotage is going to uh, give us a bit of a uh, bit of background and detail on, on, on how that came about. Uh, and obviously, uh, his journey from, uh, from physical um, art into, uh, into the, uh, the world of digital art and, uh, and NFTs in particular. Um, so welcome, Zabotage, and thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, we've got a quick uh, quick video uh, to play just at the beginning to give just uh, give you a little bit of a glimpse into into uh, into Zabotage's world, um, and uh, and then we'll kick off with some questions. Quick um, glimpse, um, Zabotage. I know you like cars. Yeah. What made what made what made you um, graffiti and and, uh, and stencil all over your car? Hey, I, I you know I I love I love my cars, but uh, I also love painting. So uh, any any chance to paint anything, I'll, I'll do it. So uh, if you stand there long enough, I'll probably paint you. <laughs> okay. Um, how long did it take you to do it? Yeah, it's probably about two days or so, but, uh, you know, as you say, it, cars are my passion and uh, it's it's something I enjoy doing. It's just like, you know, washing your car every morning. Yeah. Gets a new coat every now and then. Really? <laughs> yeah. You actually go out and actually change it and do new things? It's got about five or six layers on it. It's probably running a little bit slower because wow. of the weight of paint on it. Okay. I, I, we live near Zabotage, so I, I see your car driving around all the time. Yeah. Uh, and it's always fun just seeing this. You know, great big, bright, fun yeah, thing. You can't miss it, can you? No, you certainly can't. <laughs> um, uh, so that was the intro video. Um, but in, intro from you, can you kind of just give us a, just a brief um, a bit of detail on what, kind of what made you become an artist? I mean, why did you become an artist in the first place and what, what keeps you motivated? Um, I kind of originally started out my career as a, an architect. And um, as everyone might know, that architecture is probably... One of the longest courses out there, uh, seven, seven or seven years or so, and um, I just uh, remember experience that I had in my sixth year of being, uh, you know, trying to be an architect. My tutor turned around and saying, "You best take uh, dyslexia tests." Oh, wow! Wow! Well, what? what for? <laughs> anyway, I did. Uh, age of twenty-six, I had a read of a, a reading speed of a twelve-year-old, and uh, as you can imagine, my life kind of flash before me and kind of all these excuses why I haven't been able to do things so well and you know I'm a little bit slow at certain things and um, when that happened I realized I needed a backup plan okay um, so I still continue with my architecture but I knew I had uh, the ability to draw uh, there's a definitely a creative streak there and uh, I kind of nurtured that into creating artwork as well as uh, being a, a, an architect as well as a, an interior designer. Okay. Um, and so whilst you're doing your architecture, it did, were, you, were you doing art at the same time whilst you're doing your architecture course or was it kind of a, a move from one to the other? Was it, were you overlapping the two together? I, I, I had to overlap. Uh, it just gave me that reassurance really. And, um, you know, I, I, I kind of set my alarm clock for 4.30 in the morning. Um, I get my three hours before I used to go to work, uh, you know, in, in the office doing architecture and interiors. 
And um, you know, that's 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 my that was always my moment and my golden moment where I, I'd sort of blossom and uh, whatever I had to do at work, I did, you know. But uh, they kind of always helped each other out, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so as an urban artist, you, you uh, traditionally have, you know, when you first started out, and even up, even even still now, you create physical pieces um, all over the place, you know, yeah. on, on on buildings, on walls, um, on canvas. Um, why did you start uh, creating NFTs? What moved you from physical into the digital world? Um, yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm doing all kinds of art and uh, I paint murals on the street, I paint canvases, um, I paint cars, whatever. You know, I, I've always been doing that and I'm well practiced at that. But um, one of my collectors, uh, Ben, who, who uh, actually came to the, the fair, been at the fair, um, mentioned to me that, you know, have you considered doing NFTs? I was like, what the hell are NFTs? Mm. And this was sometime last year. Um, but like everything in Hong Kong, I, I'm, I'm always up for the opportunity and I always say yes. And uh, we had a chat and uh, it sounded massively interesting. And I have to say at the time, I was still slightly naive, but I was like, yeah, I'll roll with this. And um, yeah, kind of here, here I am today, sort of exhibiting NFTs. Yeah, well, congratulations. Um, as we said earlier, I was advertised with the first urban artist in Hong Kong to, uh, to win and, uh, and sell an <laughs> NFT. Well done. Um, the NFT is based on this physical piece, right? Yeah, Can it you is. you talk a little bit about uh, this piece, how you, you know, kind of the genesis of it and yeah. then how, how it moves um, from the physical to the digital? So this piece is in Square Street in Shanwan, uh, or was, uh, in, in uh, down the road from Mamo Temple. And uh, it was probably one of my most popular pieces um it got photographed a lot and um pop videos were filmed in front of it fashion shoots and wow. whatever um so I, you know i literally asked the, the shop woman could i paint there and she said yeah no, no, that'd be cool but then she realized how popular it was and she was like well i kind of was going to put a sign there um can i put my sign there i was like well in, what, what, instead of or <laughs> what do you mean or what? <laughs> what do you mean it's so, well, can I put my sign there? I was like, are you for real? Uh, no. <laughs> and she goes, well, it's my bloody wall. I was like, yeah, but, you know, you didn't pay me for the artwork and you're, 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 you're wanting to use my artwork to sort of, you know, promote your brand. And, 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 and so, I, so anyway, she went, it, look, it's my bloody wall. And it sort of ended up here, her, a little bit heated. And uh, so we kind of left it at that. And I hadn't, hadn't seen the wall. And then not long after, we, we kind of uh, sadly saw the disappearance of that. But luckily enough, we got a, a photograph of it. Um, and that whole background behind there is quite interesting because you see this picture and you, you, you don't know any of that. So uh, to be able to digitize it and then put it on uh, the blockchain as an NFT just felt like an opportunity I couldn't miss, you know, because yeah. you put something on the blockchain and it's there forever. So it's almost got second wind. And um, my art can now live a little bit longer. And um, I guess being a street artist, you're, you're, you're kind of used to things being painted over, but maybe that was a little bit too premature. Uh, so I, I, I felt a little bit gutted that yeah. you know, it, it had been painted over, but now it was on the blockchain and, and it sold uh, back in January. Um, so um, yeah, it's the first NFT of many, I think. So is that, is that, is that one of the reasons you think you kind of, uh, creating more NFTs now because of the permanence it gives the art. I mean, as, as you, you said, as a street artist, there's always a danger that the piece will just disappear. Yeah, no, totally. I, I think permanence, um, authenticity, um, the opportunities are kind of endless. Um, there's actually a chance as well now to make your mark, you know, um, and, you know, it's, it's, an, it's a new phenomenon that uh, most artists are sort of attaching themselves to. And I think, you know, you, you, you can really make your mark this early on. Yeah. And uh, plenty of the artists that we know, like Banksy and, you know, uh, Damien Hurst and stuff like that, 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 they're doing so as well. But, you know, I think we can make history now. And um, so that, that's an advantage. And um, I guess it's opened me up to uh, a new audience now and uh, a, a new chat. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, I find incredibly interesting. And not only that, I think that you can use NFTs to your advantage to be able to almost explain the provenance of how something's come about, okay. the process of how something's yep. come about. 
um, you know, I'm having this chat now about like this piece of work and, and you know, so it's, it's, there's, there's endless opportunities and I think it's really beneficial now for artists to be producing NFTs. Yeah, agree. Um, but before doing NFTs, you're already creating uh, kind of Bitcoin or crypto related art. Um, we've got uh, an example here. I'll just move back a little bit as well yeah, so you guys can I, see it from the sides. I, I kind of uh, never miss an opportunity to, to paint on a wall. And um, uh, this, this is kind of me like uh, working uh, on a, a project in Saikun. And it had some pieces that were very high up. And uh, I predominantly just use spray paint all the time. Yeah. So, because um, there were some hard to reach areas. I invented this tool, uh, which was able to stick a spray can onto and elevate and extend and spray high up okay. in some really awkward places. Now for me, that was an interesting tool that I could use then uh, in a piece of work. And here I, I, I was able to use it like a protractor. Oh my saw, like, yep. you know, or compass, should I say. Oh, for the rainbow. Yeah, for the rainbow itself. So, you know, again, I'm sort of informing this, which you'd never think how, you know, how, how it might have come about. But uh, the process of it was the interesting bit. Okay. As well as the, the end result. But, yeah, you know, the sort of Bitcoin at the end. The fish is, uh, is obviously my, my, my trademark, my, my sort of, uh, my signature piece that I kind of like to include in most pins, things that I do. Um, so yeah, that's kind of way back in I think last so, year or so. So for you, is it, is it you talked then about process? Is the is the process of creation quite an important part of your artwork as well as the actual end product? And obviously, you had to go through a process to create this. Um, with, and with NFTs, is, is is what's the process you need to go through well, when you when you do an NFT or I digital mean, art? That that's that's the interesting thing about NFTs now because it's all about you you can animate the digital or or you can even explain the story. Uh, I think um, you know some some of the more popular artists out there have been destroying original pieces uh, to make their NFTs more more uh, more valued. Yeah. Um, where I feel that I'm celebrating maybe my pieces. Uh, my original pieces or even showing another story of how that piece came around uh, and, and capturing that in an NFT and, and then having an original to sort of combine showing the process. So that, that, that I feel is, is, is very much. So, so you're, you're, you're effectively blending the two, the yeah. physical, physical world and the digital world yeah, uh, in, in how you process that. We've got a slide here, uh, which uh, this is talk a little bit about this. This is uh, this is one of your NFTs, right? That, um... Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we've got an invitation to uh, show some work at Digital Art Fair. I'm like, wow, okay, get, get your thinking out on how, how do we do it? And I always like to start with something maybe physical uh, or have something to start from. And, and, and this is a painting I felt that could regenerate or rejuvenate, should I say. So this was a physical piece. You this was a physical done. piece, was a frame. And uh, you can see my coefficient there. And it's like, don't panic, you can. You know, it's about positivity. Um, and so, yeah, I'm not going to panic about this exhibition. I'm going to create something new, right? Okay. So there's a instantly sort of like a dialogue I engage with. I take a photograph of this, put it into digital, and I start working through with this ideas of, how this can morph itself into something that could be worthy, uh, subject worthy to be put into the digital art fair. Now, this is kind of the end result, as you see, and it's it's uh, minted, uh, and it's a play on the word of obviously, you know, uh, the process or, or the new language that we're exposed to is like uh, you, you mint, uh, you can mint an NFT, or you're minted as a result of doing NFTs, you know, so yep. this is double play. And, and, and a lot of my work has that sort of double play in it. So, uh... okay. And then we have a little, um, little video here, which just shows the process. Um, I suppose it's, it's quite a quick video, isn't it? Um, it is a quick you know, video. A little bit about it before we I mean, on. it's not the actual NFT itself. No. It's just showing the workings of how maybe something or my thinking goes on on how I can constantly adapt, constantly change something, just have a little bit of fun. You know, is it about NFT, is it about Bitcoin? You know, uh, whatever it is, it's, 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 it's rolling out some ideas. Um, and, you know, 
that that for me uh, works very well on a digital. And you see that I, I'm sort of drawing without sort of consequences. This is all sort of on 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 the digital sense. But then that's the digital. Uh, and I would have a, a stage where I would say, okay, we've got to flip now over to the original. And um, when I get into the original, new uh, thinking comes to me. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm sort of harnessing my creative streak by doing original, which I probably wouldn't, it wouldn't come about if I was to permanently stick with digital. So that's why we've got this, you know, original, maybe turning into digital, yeah play back again, even flip it over, go back to the digital or, or the, the original, and then finalize on a digital, but then almost harmonize them together. So, you know, that's why you're seeing pieces down there that are uh, digital and they're original. Okay. So together, so does the NFT. Yeah. So when you're, so when you are, um, when you're creating digital art, um, you, you it's got explained quite a bit there. That there's a lot of, lot of physicality in that, in terms of, can you talk, Talk a bit through the process that you go through when you're actually creating a piece like this in terms of blending the physical, the digital, how you yeah, switch Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I spent sort of 20 years or so um, be, being an artist that uh, used the spray paint, as I use the spray can. And um, I, I guess that's where my freedom lies. That's where my creative energy and creative juices are. And that's where they flow. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, I, I see uh, security in that, or you know, it's 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 a place where I want to be, and, and and things are relaxed, and new ideas come to me. And like I said, I, I don't necessarily feel that those are ideas would come out if it was just a solely digital process. Sitting at a desk on a computer, right? Yeah, than totally. You know, I'm sort of almost changed my surroundings, and and and. You know, it's, it's even if I paint in the street, you know, the ideas can flow a little bit more. And so for that reason, that's why I'm kind of maybe wanting to hold on to the originals just as much as, you know, the, the, the NFTs. Yep. So when you're creating an NFT, do you uh, kind of how do, how do you start with that? Do you start by making a physical piece and, and then and then and then digitizing it or it, it, are you are yeah you i mean it can, st it can start it start multitude of ways but uh, it, it might be an original piece as it was in this case uh it's an idea um but you know it gives me something to work from and i can bounce things around and then that's where i feel my sort of super creative energy you know creative juices sort of come out and and you know, it's one comes after the next and there's, there's a constant flow and there's a, a bit of jumping from backwards and forwards. So, um, yeah. Okay. And, 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 and do you have, um, so when you're going through the process of, of actually creating any art, uh, whether you know, physical or digital, uh, are there any kind of, you know, kind of um, ideals or basic rules that you stick to, or is it just an open, like, you know, kind of whatever's in your head and yeah. whatever you see that yeah. you feel like you want to create and paint around, you just kind of, Go yeah, there there are, and um, there are probably decisions, thousands of decisions I make in a split second, and that's kind of because I'm very well rehearsed with it now. It's kind of you know, the composition's got to sit well. It's got to be colourful. It's got to be bold. It's got to be able to communicate with people, have some sort of depth of meaning too, um, and and you know it might even be witty. Uh, so there's a lot of my work that just plays on on words um so you know i i need to tick about sort of six or seven boxes okay. um just to just to make sure that that's what i feel comfortable about yep. and talking about yep. and, yeah and when you're creating it are you thinking about the audience in terms of um you know kind of uh, trying to evoke emotion to some people or get a message across or are you kind of just creating things that you love and having fun and hoping people like it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's got to feel right for me, but then, you know, you can't help sort of thinking about your audience. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a certain element of it that gets tailored a little bit, but uh, if I feel strongly enough about it, then, you know, that's going to be the end result. Um, okay. And is that is that more so now than, than uh, is that more so when you're creating NFTs versus physical or is it the same, same in terms of the process and, and, and the, yeah, I, I think patterns. it's the same, 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 really. Um, I just think that you have that extra layer that, you know, you're, you're converting that original into a digital, but then you've got that extra opportunity to, you know, extra layer, should I say. So from 2D 
it's not even 3D and maybe even 4D now. And, and when I describe 4D, it's what encompasses around it. It's what yep. led up to it. Um, what, whatever it could be, you know, it, it just, the thing comes, you've got an opportunity to make the thing come to life even more yep. or even capture your audience yep. uh, even more. And obviously when you live in Hong Kong and you've been resident here for, for many years, uh, originally from the UK, um, you, you, you kind of, in some of your art, you like to blend the East meets West kind of theme um, as well, right? And uh, yeah, and we talked about, you know, blending um, physical art and digital art in your, in your processing. So it, it clearly kind of blending things and fusing things together is something which is very much part of yeah, your I mean, art. Do you want to, I mean, this is a physical piece you do. Yeah, this is, this is a canvas that I was creating on my studio, which is a rooftop. Um, it was a canvas um, and I'm using pretty much my uh, stencil language. And when I say stencil, it's like a two-tone stencil. So you have a background color and then a layer over the top. And this just sort of depicts as like kind of light and shadow sort of uh, effect to it. Um, and um, what I tend to do is sort of pick uh, iconic graphic images or, or, or things that I see visually in, in Hong Kong. There's a multitude of them, you know, whether it's the Hong Kong skyline or get it that Yeah, line. a bit of feedback <laughs> too close. <laughs> um, I won't lean forward. Uh, so, you know, whether it's the taxi tie, taxi signs uh, or even taxi themselves or just whatever signs or even bits of fruit or whatever. So here you see predominantly on one side of the painting, they're very much high. Hong Kong elements, even like the 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 text we see at the background, um, and uh, the koi fish and, and and stuff. And then on the flip reverse of that is, is uh, you know uh, British uh, elements, and and you know you have the Big Ben there, you have the payphone telephone box, and the British stamp and stuff like that. So so um, yeah, I mean that's that's kind of a, a process I go to sort of communicate. Or the contents or what I'm trying to communicate, yeah. should I say. Um, and interestingly enough, this is uh, one that you'll see on uh, a, a, a can of beer uh, called Guaylo, uh, which I'm very much a fan of, <laughs> yeah. like to drink. Um, you know, so, you, so, so my you, wife, you made this for them, for Guaylo, they printed it on, Yeah, on for the breeze, yeah, so totally, yeah. Awesome. So, um, and then, uh, so this is a physical piece, and you, you talked about um, stenciling uh, yeah. and the use of stencils. In that, um, I believe you know for your NFT work, that's you use quite a bit of stencil work as well. Yeah, so I, I, think this I is would, a good example. I would this actually, is your, this is NFT, this is digital. Right? Yeah, this is yeah. down, this is steam downstairs actually, and this is my digital piece. And um, so this is how I would normally originally have started out original anyway. So uh, I would have digitally drawn these things, uh, these stencil uh, images, collage them together. Uh, get a sense of Hong Kong, try and get a good fun vibe about it, you know, whether it's the sort of a cool or the, the Lambo, um, wh whatever it is, you know, I'm sort of throwing it in there, I'm using vibrant colors and, and, and you know, strategically like relocating and whatever. So that this, this now is almost just uh, skipping the original bit in this case, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of celebrating that fact that I'm harnessing that digital and I, it's always been there within my blood so yeah so 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 your physical art when you're stenciling you actually create the stencil digitally and then yeah, yeah i create, and then I create digitally with... then i cut them out then okay. i create them but whatever that process is more more things come out from actually doing the physical yeah um so yeah it's an interesting process so it's a good blend yeah Thanks. um obviously you, you've been creating nfts for a little while now and, and, and digital art and, and more and more so uh, kind of all the time Clearly, it's something which you uh, really enjoy, which you're passionate about, both the art and the actual digital part of it as well. Um, do you? I mean, do you see that uh, you know digital art is and, and NFTs in particular hold like a, a, a big part of your you know, artistic future? Look, I, I I've been doing digital uh, as long as I can remember, even for architecture, and even back in the days of architecture, I was a three D visualizer. Um, so using 3D packages, visualizing, you know, new proposals and interiors and stuff like that. Um, and then I always wanted to strive to be the, 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 the original, you know, creating original pieces. Um, that was kind of, you know, it's over 20 years ago that I was using these programs and, and now they're being reintroduced into my life. And I just think digital is always going to be there, no matter what you say. Um, so 
you know, I, I'm, I'm embracing it. I'm using those skills that I've learned on the way and um, being incredibly informed, even more so from events like this. Awesome. And, you know, it's exciting times. So yeah. you have to watch your space and see what develops. Good. It is exciting times. Yeah. Talk of exciting times, we have um, Zavatage obviously exhibiting, uh, you know, some of his digital art downstairs. Uh, these are some of the, uh, uh, some of the, uh, the images uh, which yeah. you find down there. Um, so yeah, so this is this is downstairs in the urban art uh, uh, section, uh, the pioneer uh, section as well, um, and um, yeah, they're down there. So I'm here. Um, I'm happy to sort of mingle afterwards and then maybe talk through uh, these pieces. Um, you know, there's so much to talk about these things. So maybe if we're down there, just grab me and. Um, yeah, I'd love to be able to talk through. Unfortunately, some of them are sold already, right? But there's still some. There's That's still, not there's unfortunate still, at all. Charging <laughs> 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 some of these guys, but not all of them. So please do feel free to go down and uh, have a chat yeah. with, with Zavatage about about his art and uh, you know throw him some questions. But, but I mean, before that, does, I mean, um, does anyone anyone in the room have any questions that they want to put to Zavatage now? Um, so if you go back on the slides on the label that you made for uh, Guaylo, yeah, what's the G? Like that's the one that I kind of. Guaylo. I recognize like everything else, but then like G, kind of like white G. G, G for Guaylo. Yeah, it's their it's their brand. So it's uh... my name's also George, so it kind of fits quite nicely. <laughs> and my name's also like Gus Guaylo, as well. And that's so Gus, it's... so it kind of like it, you know. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, triangulates the, perfectly. The, the big G, the, the G. <laughs> exactly. OG NFT OG, you would be now as, as the first ur urban, urban artist to sell one in Hong Kong. It'd be Hong Kong's NFT OG, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any more questions or any other questions I'd like to ask? Oh, great question. Yeah, good question. Um, no, I, I, I think I, I have now more of an awareness now of going through the process quite a lot more, how I kind of want to tell the full story at the end. And it's that extra dimension that I was talking about before that you, you've got access to. So, so maybe the, the original uh, is not as informed, uh, but the NFT can be superly informed, I think, and, and you know, bring this thing to life. So... I, I kind of am a little bit more aware now of how maybe that gets more informed. Did I say inform a lot? Yeah, no, yeah. you do, but it's good. <laughs> but the, I suppose that with the physical piece, you, you, you only, people don't see you creating the physical piece. They just see the physical piece at yeah. the end, right? Whereas with the NFT, you can, you can actually, there's, there's, you know, there's, Playing you can see the whole process like we saw it. in that yeah, video earlier. Yeah, yeah. You can see the different layers and the yeah, process yeah. of going to get to the end. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you're, you're, you're deciding which parts of that process to capture totally. to tell the story of the creation as well as just having the end product there yeah. at the same time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Powerful. <laughs> I love it. Um, anyone else have any uh, question or so for sabotage? In that case, um, we'll, did you have a question? What, when you said OG, what does OG mean? Uh, interesting. I, I, I thought it meant old guard, but I was educated recently. It means original gangster. Uh, and it was it was it was a title yes. of of a, a nice T album, because of all these gangster rappers coming, and he was like, "I was the original. I was here before you." So he brought out an album called OG, original gangster. There you go. I'll be aware of that one, not the other one. What was exactly. The other one? <laughs> Old guard. Yeah, Old it's, guard. Yeah, it's no good. It's showing your age now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Enough about that. Um, well, thanks everyone for coming uh, yeah, and, uh, and so listening much. to Zabotage. Thank you, Zabotage, for that. Thank you. Um, and he is around if you guys want to catch in and uh, have a chat about his art. Thank you.